describe how Wireshark processes packets. In this section, I'll show you the basic flow of Wireshark processing, and then I'll take you out to Wireshark so you can see where the list of dissectors and plugins resides. So let's begin with this diagram. And we saw parts of this earlier when we were talking about the capture interfaces. If you're capturing off of the network, you're going to go through one of these link layer drivers, the Win PCAP driver, Air PCAP, Live PCAP. And then from that point on, we have Dump PCAP that's doing the actual capturing. Remember that Wireshark.exe can't actually capture packets. Neither can Tshark.exe if you're wondering about command line capture. They both call dumpcap.exe to do the actual packet capture. This is the point at which capture filters can be applied. Capture filters are in the BPF format, or the Berkeley Packet Filtering format. Packets are piped up to the capture engine. From that point, they're moved to the core engine. And the core engine is where dissectors, plugins, and display filters reside. Now note that multiple dissectors can be applied to a single packet. And in fact, let's say you have an HTTP GET request. The packet would begin with an Ethernet header, and in that Ethernet header there would be a type field. And let's say the type field has the value 0800 in it, in hex. Well, that indicates that IPv4 is coming up next. So the IPv4 dissector would take over and pull apart the packet and show us all the fields inside of the IPv4 header. In the IPv4 header, there's a protocol field. And if that protocol field has the value 6 in it, that indicates that TCP is coming up next. So the IPv4 dissector would hand the packet off then to the TCP dissector. The TCP dissector would then pull apart the TCP header, showing us all the fields. And the TCP dissector itself has the expert info system in it, so it looks for things such as indications of lost packets or out-of-order packets or retransmissions. Inside that TCP header, Wireshark will look at the port information first to figure out what dissector should be applied next. If it can't find anything that matches the port information, then Wireshark will look for a heuristic dissector, a dissector that looks at the contents of the packet to try to figure out what type of packet it is. So there are a number of heuristic dissectors in Wireshark, and the packet will be passed from heuristic dissector to heuristic dissector until hopefully one of them matches the packet contents and is applied. If the destination port number is 80 in here, Wireshark, by default, believes that that's going to be an HTTP packet. The TCP dissector will then hand the packet off to the HTTP dissector. The HTTP dissector will break apart all the field values, so the GET request, etc. If it's a response packet, Wireshark understands all the response codes for HTTP. We may think that it's all done at the HTTP header function, but if it's a response packet where you receive a 200 OK, so the server is saying, whatever you ask for, I have it. And if you had asked for, let's say, a JPEG file, Wireshark has a JPEG dissector. Wireshark will break apart the contents of the JPEG file after the HTTP dissector. So we would see the packet being passed over to the JPEG dissector. This is also the point at which plugins may be used. Now a plugin is an add-on to Wireshark, and I'm going to take you out to Wireshark in a moment so you can see where the list of available plugins resides. And this is also the point where we can apply display filters to the traffic that we've captured. We can apply inclusion filters, so we're filtering something into our view, or we can apply exclusion display filters, where we filter something out of our view. If we're picking up trace files from a hard drive, this is where we see the same process that we saw a moment ago. 
the packets go through the wiretap library and they also go up to the core engine. And that's when dissectors, plugins, and display filters can be applied to the traffic. There are two graphical interface possibilities for Wireshark at this time. We have GTK Plus, and GTK has been the interface for Wireshark for a long time, the graphical interface toolkit. But now we've moved over to QT as the graphical toolkit for Wireshark. As of Wireshark 2.0, you have a choice of which graphical interface you want to use after you install Wireshark. Now let's go over to Wireshark so that we can see the list of the dissectors, plugins, and I'll take you on a tour of display filters. Let's begin by just opening up a trace file. I'm going to open up the trace file called tr-ftp-http. We used that one in the last section when we were looking at the hex view of that trace file so we could pick apart all of the blocks inside of it. Up on the menu bar, under the internals section, we can click on supported protocols. And it says that it's slow, but it's really not that slow on my system. It's basically just a list of all of the different protocols and applications supported by Wireshark. These are all the protocols and applications that have dissectors. You can see at the top that Wireshark indicates that there are 1,377 protocols and packet types currently supported in Wireshark. And under the internals menu item, I'll select dissector tables now. These are tables that are referenced by the various dissectors. We see string tables, we see integer tables, and then we have the heuristic tables. Let's take a look at the plugins that are available in Wireshark. We'll go up under Help on the menu bar, About Wireshark, and then choose Plugins. This is a list of the plugins that are installed with Wireshark by default based on the current version that I'm running. Additional plugins may be available at a later date. For information on any one of these plugins, you could simply do a search on the internet for Wireshark and then the plugin name. Let's take a look at the display filter area. Now display filters can be used to simply include certain packets into our view or exclude certain packets from view. This is the display filter area and I'm going to type in a very simple filter that states frame contains quote get all in capital letters unquote. I expect to see all the HTTP get requests when I apply this display filter. I'll click the apply button and down below on the status bar, Wireshark indicates that there are 104 packets, or 1.5% of the packets in the trace file, that match that display filter. The word to the left of this display filter area is actually a button. This pulls up the list of default display filters in Wireshark, and you can add additional filters. I like this filter that says frame contains get, so I'm going to type in the name get for my filter. In order to save a new display filter, you have to click the new button. You must be able to see your display filter on the display filter list in order to have Wireshark save it. I'll click OK. And now if I want to bring that filter back again, I can simply click the filter button on the left hand side and select it from the list. Display filtering has become more advanced in Wireshark in the last couple of versions. Now we have these filter expression buttons that we can add up here in the display filter area. The filter expression buttons have largely taken over the responsibility of saving display filters. Rather than select the filter button on the left hand side and provide a name for my filter, if this is a filter I want to use again and again, once the filter is in the display filter window, I can click the Save button and provide a name for my filter. Once I click OK, Wireshark creates a button on the Display Filter toolbar based on that name. I'll clear this filter, and if I want to apply that filter again, 
I can simply click the button now. For more information on display filtering, see Wireshark Core Training 9, Create and Apply Display Filters.